it's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Corsair Xenion 32QHD165. The OSD is controlled by a little joystick at the rear towards the right side as viewed from in front. There's also a dedicated power button just above that. If you twiddle the joystick left, then you can adjust the volume of anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. If you twiddle it up, you can change the brightness. Twiddle it to the right and you can change the input source. Twiddle it down and you can change the preset used by the monitor. I'll run through them when I get to them in the main menu system very shortly. To enter the main menu system, push the joystick in. You can see the first thing there, this picture. Presets, so the standard movie, text, sRGB, creative, and game. All these do is they change things on this picture menu here to various different settings. So there's no need to run through these specifically. Only exception is sRGB. That's an sRGB emulation mode that clamps the gamut close to sRGB. You can see you can adjust the brightness, but it does lock off the remaining settings in this picture menu here except for response time and refresh overlay, but you can see key settings such as color temperature and gamma are locked off. I actually quite like the simplicity of this preset system. I'm not usually a fan of presets that change loads of things and you can't always work out what's changing anyway. It locks off various settings. Now I know the sRGB setting locks things off. That's the exception here. The remaining settings, it means you can adjust things to your liking. It will remember the adjustments you've made to the picture section of the menu for that preset. So you've got quite a few different slots to fill, so to speak. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast, sharpness as well. This is in increments of one. You can adjust that between zero, which gives an extremely soft look. Five is the neutral value, the default value, the optimal value in my view. And 10 is very sharp indeed, very over sharpened. It can be useful to have this flexibility, particularly if you're running non-native resolutions. I do explore this in the interpolation and upscaling section of the written review. Color temperature, so you can change the color channels, red, green, and blue, manually adjust them. You can have it set to cool, normal, which is the factory defaults, warm, which is a moderate low blue light setting, and I explore that in the written review. So it does give a warm tint to the image. It reduces the blue color channel quite significantly and it does effectively reduce the blue light output. There's another low blue light setting, whilst I'm talking about low blue light settings, called Eye Saver, a little bit further in the menu. You can use this and warm at the same time. And actually what I've done is I've made use of these flexible presets and my text setting. By default, that is set to a nice low brightness of 30, I believe it's set to 30 by default. It also has the color temperature set to warm by default but I then turned the eye saver mode on. So this is applied on top of the warm setting and it's a very effective low blue light setting I've created. This is all explored in the calibration section of the vision review. There's a gamma setting set to 2.2, 2.4 or 2.0. On my unit, these did correspond to the actual measured gamma. That may not necessarily be the case on all units, but it certainly was with my unit. There's a saturation slider. You can increase the digital saturation. So if you increase this, what it does is it pulls shades closer to the edge of the gamut without expanding the gamut itself. So you do lose shade variety, things start to look very cartoonish, crushed together. The most saturated shades don't become any more saturated, but some people may like to increase this just according to tastes, but I have to say that natively this monitor with its native gamut is very saturated anyway. It's unlikely people are gonna to want to do this. Sometimes with these saturation controls, it would be set to five by default. You could actually reduce the saturation a bit, but on this one, zero is the default, so you can't reduce it any more than that. Response time settings explored in the review. There's fast, fastest, and normal. Refresh overlay. This will give you a little indicator of your current refresh rate at the top right. This says FPS, and it's a frame counter if you're using adaptive sync, because that means that the refresh rate of the monitor will adjust where it can to match the frame rate of the content. I'm just going to quickly open G-Sync Pendulum just so you can see this in action. You can see it has a very rapid polling rate. It adjusts very quickly and that can mean it's actually quite difficult at times to read the exact figure there. And in game, sometimes these fluctuations are less predictable than they are with G-Sync Pendulum. So this tends to go up and then down a bit. But with games, you can have sudden jumps all over the place and 
it can be at times very difficult to actually read. So I would have preferred to have a slower polling rate, but it does the trick. It lets you know that Adaptive Sync's working, and it also gives you an indication of the frame rate. There's a setting called MPRT, Moving Picture Response Time. You can see it's greyed out at the moment, and the reason it's greyed out for me at the moment is because I have Adaptive Sync active, and the Adaptive Sync setting, it's called AMD FreeSync Premium in the OSD, but it's also for NVIDIA's G-Sync compatible mode on compatible GPUs. And you'll see I can now activate MPRT. When I do this, the screen's going to flicker, so consider this a flicker warning. What this is, is it's a strobe backlight setting. It causes the screen to flicker at a frequency matching the refresh rate of the display, either 120Hz, 144 Hz, or 165 Hz. All explored in the written review, and be aware that you can't adjust brightness with this setting active, but you can adjust other things. Next you've got OSD setting, so you can change the language the OSD is displayed in. There's a transparency effect you can enable, it's a very heavy transparency effect, so it makes things quite difficult to see against the background. Timeout period, so how long after the last button press before the OSD automatically disappears. That's set in seconds between 10 and 60 seconds. If you prefer, you can just back out of the OSD, so to do that you would just press the joystick in again, and then you can see that you're less deep into the menu, and then you would just press the joystick left. Next up you've got system setting, you can change the aspect ratio. This is greyed out if you've got Adaptive Sync active, so if you've got AMD FreeSync Premium set to on here, this would be greyed out and set to auto. And this is explored in the interpolation and upscaling section of the written review, but basically auto will try to respect the aspect ratio of the resolution you've selected, so it will give you black borders, unless you're running a 16 by 9 resolution. There is also a setting which enforces a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. You can see the black borders either side of the image there. And then there's 16 by 9 which will always use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio regardless of the resolution you've selected. So it will use all of the pixels on this screen because it's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio screen. MD FreeSync Premium which I've gone through. LED, that controls the little power LED here. It glows white when the monitor's on and glows dark orange when the monitor enters the low power state, so signal to the system is lost. If you prefer, you can just turn that off. There's factory reset, which will reset everything to the factory defaults. Audio, which allows you to change the volume of anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. This monitor doesn't have integrated speakers, so be aware of that. It's just controlling something connected to the 3.5mm jack here. Audio input, so you can have the monitor automatically decide which input to use for the audio here. Or you can have HDMI 1, HDMI 2, or DisplayPort, or Type-C. Input source, as you'd expect, that allows you to select the input used by the monitor. And then there's information, that just gives you some basic information about the screen. Interesting thing here, they say refresh overlay, I assume it's refresh rate. Uh, this is a pre-release sample, this one pre-retail sample if you prefer, so it may be that they change the wording there to say refresh rate, but this would match the refresh overlay if you're using that feature as it happens, so perhaps that's why they've called it that. But anyway, this just gives you information about your current setup with this screen, including the firmware version, HDR on or off, I'll go through that quickly. Actually, if you turn HDR on, it does indeed restrict the OSD quite a lot. So I'm now running in HDR. I've turned HDR on in Windows, and you'll see it says Preset HDR. You can't change that. Brightness you can't change. Contrast you can't change. Sharpness you can change. Color temperature and gamma is locked off as well. A lot of things are locked off, as is usual under HDR, High Dynamic Range. You can change the response time, and there's a Refresh Overlay feature you can use as well if you want. And the rest of the menu can be adjusted as normal. You'll see it says in Information there, HDR on. You can also control the monitor using Corsair's IQ software, and there's a link to download that in the description of the video. Be aware that you need a USB cable connected to your system, between the monitor and the system, to use this. And the monitor has Type-C ports, USB Type-C, two USB Type-C ports, and it includes a USB-C cable, that's a straight USB-C to USB-C in the box. So if you have a USB-A port, like a normal USB port if you prefer, on your system but no Type-C, you will need a different cable or an adapter to be able to plug this in. But the software is very simple, it shows the monitor there, and then you just click on it, and then it puts this little calibration guide up onto the screen, or you can shift that to a picture of the monitor if you prefer. And then there's just various different settings here, 
various different picture settings, so things from the picture part of the menu, such as the presets, various other settings here. MPRT, that's greyed out because I've got AMD FreeSync active at the moment. There's also device settings, has various other settings here. So these are all found in the OSD. You'll see that aspect ratio is greyed out. So if I turn AMD FreeSync Premium off, you can now adjust the aspect ratio mode, just like you could in the main OSD, and also the MPRT function can be used as well. So that's really all there is to the IQ software and also the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Corsair Xenion 32 QHD165. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, alongside information about how you can support the work that we do.